Okay. Okay, welcome back to my videos on uh, when marketing feels like shouting into a void. Today's video is going to tackle social media. And I have two sets of notes. Um, one of which I wrote a week ago when I originally planned to make this video and then um, I, I splattered water on it. Also, it's kind of illegible. Um, I, I posted a picture of this on Instagram and I think Facebook too. And somebody commented that I could give doctors uh, a lesson in how to write notes. And the, the funny thing is that I used to do that. I used to give doctors notes on um, communication skills that used, that was my day job before I was a writer a long, long time ago. Okay, so anyway, so today we are talking about social media and the, the patience that it requires because there is very little immediate reward um, for social media, but it is a long build, a slow build that has big payoff, big reward down the road. So let's get into it. All of book marketing is split between engaging with cold audiences to find new readers. That's where you see new growth, big growth and fostering warm audiences to funnel casual readers toward a more serious fandom, which creates a base of readers who love your work and will buy your books consistently. Uh, social media is no different. If you're wearing your author hat, you want to have a clear understanding of each task you give yourself. Is it about attracting new readers or rewarding existing readers? In fact, great marketing is both, but probably in different places. Um, the next video in this series will be on cost per click advertising, and that is all about cold audiences. So you could think social media is the warm audience angle. Nope, that was email marketing, which we did in the last video. Social media is the mix of the two. And I think, <sighs> I think in part that's why it's overwhelming for so many of us. It's all the things, all the time, without many boundaries and very few guidelines um, for best practices. If there's one secret to social media, it's probably you have to use it for it to make a difference, <laughs> which makes me laugh because that, I mean, that's literally true for everything. Um, but social media in particular, I see a lot of people, including myself, I see myself. Ah, I have a guest. Hello. Hi. Um, I want to interview a book called Dogman. I have a stuffy of him, right? Yep, yeah, this is Dogman. <laughs> He's a police officer. He was a police officer and was a police dog. Yeah. And then an explosion happened. Yeah. Explosion. Yeah, and then they were both dying. Do you love Dogman? Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, and then they were sewed together into a Dogman. Oh. This is Dogman, the character. Okay. Can I finish my talk about social media? Sure, I'm Dogman. Okay. Okay, where was I? Um. A lot of us, myself included, we try something once, twice, maybe even three times, and then we throw our hands up and we say it doesn't work. But if you think about building a brand awareness, creating content, nobody has a fandom after three attempts to establish that brand with a Facebook post or a Twitter thread. Um, the, the, the initial first attempts of it, it's very much like that snowball effect that I talked about in an earlier video. Social media is the ultimate in build it and they will come after a long while slowly and in fits and starts. Uh, which means you must divorce yourself from immediate return on investment, you must be as objective as possible when deciding what content is working for your brand and when you want to change it up. You must keep a steady stream of it if you want to see a return on investment. You don't need to keep a steady stream of it if you are deep in the writing cave and you're taking a break. It is absolutely okay for social media to go in ebbs and flows. That's totally fine. Um, and ideally, social media shouldn't actually take you any time at all. I probably should have led with that off the top. It's much more inspiring than 
all the stuff that I just said before that. If, in fact, here's the takeaway. Here is the takeaway that I want you to have. I don't want you to do social media. I want you to create an author persona and I want you to do social media for that author persona. In another video, I said, you need to be your own acquisitions editor. You need to know which title you should carry forward to publication, not because I really want to write this book, but because this book is right for the market and this author is the right person to write that book. Those are the, those are the considerations that acquisitions editors make. So when you have to be your own marketing manager, right, for an author persona, you're going to make different decisions than if you are just, you know, bearing your, your sweet little writer heart on the internet. And there is a place for that. Like YouTube, I think, can be a place for that. Twitter can be a place for that. Your own personal Facebook feed can be a place for that. And I'm going to get back to that. Um, but really in order to like really succeed at social media, you must be your own marketing assistant and wear two very different hats. Or if you can't do that for X, Y, Z reason, you need to budget a reasonable amount of money to outsource that effort. And it can be a very reasonable amount of money. I did a couple of videos about distinguishing between a completely lean start to self-publishing versus if you have a generous budget and where I would spend money if you have some money to spend when you get started. And I think if there's interest, if you want to see this, let me know in the comments. I can do the same for social media. I can break it down, but I don't want to get bogged down in specifics because I really want you just kind of thinking about that concept of in order for social media to succeed, it must be run from a marketing perspective and you can do it or somebody else can do it. It can be done in a big way or it can be done in a little way, but it must be really systematic there. Okay. Um, basically the, in, in both examples, like how do you get started in publishing and how do you do social media, either you, you yourself or somebody else doing it. Um, time is money. If you don't have money, then you need to put in the time. If you don't have time, money can get it done in a different way. Okay. So now I'm going to go back to my handwritten notes and we're going to see what, okay. So earlier I said social media is very much like build it and they will come, but like eventually and fits and starts and it'll be slow at first. And my own experience has been very much like that. Like there is, there will be long stretches when you get something started where you don't really have any, you're not, you're not, it's not, it's not feeling very social. That's for sure. Um, when I, when I started publishing, uh, I, I published my first book June 15th, 2003. And I was just looking, I just happened to be doing some maintenance, um, in my Facebook reader group. And I saw that I created that Facebook reader group July 9th, 2003. Um, and for the first bunch of months, like months went by and there were five people in that reader group. And one of them was my uncle Matt. Uh, <laughs> it was me. It was a critique partner. It was my sister. Uh, it was one random reader or maybe two, might've been six people. Cause it might've been two random readers who found me early on and my uncle Matt. And then I was in a box set, an anthology with Noelle Adams and Samantha Chase. There were, we had five titles in it. Uh, and, um, and I found like a, fur, like a, like a, a swell of readers. Like I got 20 people added to my reader group. And when I welcomed them, I think I shared like, you know, attractive looking men, um, photos, male photos, photos of men. You know what I mean? And my uncle Matt exited out of the reader group no longer for him, but that's okay. Um, but it really, it took months for me to see any traction. And, and today that group has like 1500 readers in it. Um, and there will be like, I go whole months where I don't really interact very much in that group, but I have a release coming out in June, June 2nd, Reckless at Heart. And so over the last month, I have just put it on my calendar every single day, pop into the group and say hi. And, and sometimes it's, like a random Facebook share. Sometimes it's a question. Sometimes, sometimes it's about the book and I'm going to loop back to like really like super basic, like how do you generate content when it feels like staring at a blank screen and it's so hard. 
Um, the other note that I have here is, I've, I, I already said this, but we're going to repeat it anyway because it's worth repeating. It's okay if it ebbs and flows. Um, when you, when, you know, I, when it ebbs, when it ebbs, when it comes back, right, and when you want it to flow again, there will be a bit of work to like get back up to speed. But when I started posting more actively because I had a release coming up, it didn't take very long to re-engage those people in my group. Um, and the more you do it, the more cycles of that you go through, people will start to recognize it. Um, so that's okay. It, but that dreaded void, you can experience it over and over and over again. Um, you have to learn to embrace it. You have to learn to be like, oh, no, actually, the void is part of it. The void is part of marketing. There you go. There's a takeaway from this entire Unicorn Onesie series. Marketing feels like shutting into a void because it is a void. That's the whole challenge. If you don't want to do it, find a way to outsource it to somebody who does because that void is so challenging and exciting. Okay, um, so here's the other like really hard thing to wrap our heads around. Some people are email folk, some people are social media folk, some people are neither and they just want to do their own little thing, they will keep track of you on their own. You don't really have to market very much to them um, other than writing like a really awesome book. Um, there is some overlap, um, but these are two different audiences. Email, which we covered in the last video, social media, and then even cost per click, like that targeting on social media, but it's to a cold audience. Those are three different audiences and you just, um, it's okay if you can't port. Like if you have a decent sized mailing list, but when you share your Facebook group to it, you don't really get anybody moved over. That's okay. That's normal. Um, not everybody's going to want to be everywhere. So here's another huge takeaway that I want you to remember. Social media content creation is intellectual property. Use it richly, use it widely, reuse it. Don't, um, don't give it hours when you're on deadline and don't give it hours only to use it once. So um, something that I really like is um, saving everything to a swipe file. I thought that I wrote this somewhere. Did I? Did I not? Okay. Um, oh yes, I did. Okay, I'm gonna come to that. We're gonna come back to the swipe files. All right. Uh, things that, like every, here's the thing, and I think I talked about this in another video, but we're gonna, I'm gonna again say, here's the thing about like literally everything. If I said it in another video, if somebody else said it in a video or a course or a book, it's all worth repeating over and over and over again because the basics, the core of like literally all marketing, it doesn't change. Um, it, it, it Things that worked in marketing 20 years ago, 30 years ago, pre, you know, web 2.0, they still work now just in a new and, you know, like mixed it up kind of way. But right now in web 2.0, video is great. So if you can find a way to create, it doesn't need to be like this. You don't need to put on a unicorn onesie. Um, like literally just use, if you can use your phone to take a picture, use your phone to take a video of your book and share that. Um, and then just like note the difference that video over still photo makes. Some people will tell you that it makes a huge difference. Other people like will say, you know, like you can mix things up in different ways. So you can make slideshow of photos, but video, 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 if you can find a way to, to layer in some video content to your social media, IP, like your content. So what you're going to do is you're going to try and make like a set of, of content and you're going to try and use it over and over again. Make at least one of those pieces some video content. Ask questions. Um, I'm going to come back to this again in a second. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about surveying readers, but I think I'm going to highlight that and save it for like a whole separate video. So if you're wondering like, does, you know, you, you know, you mentioned the trope survey and you mentioned a couple of other things. Can I survey readers? I have so many thoughts on that. That's going to be its own video. Um, okay. Reveals. So if you are a romance writer or a romance reader, you might notice that in some corners of social media, like Instagram and Facebook, reveals are like the hot thing. People love doing cover reveals. Lately, I've seen some people do a title reveal or a blurb reveal. And the thing about a reveal 
And it, and it all this is also true for email. Like the idea that there's genuinely something new and interesting inside an email makes people open it. Like what is this thing that I should see? Um, a reveal is that it is genuinely fresh content. And so there, there is some value there, but like that's not that's not a basic, that's not a tenant of marketing. That's not a, that's not a component of marketing. That's an example of, of the component of marketing, which is create new content, um, make it genuinely interesting and deliver on that promise of this is something new. You got to make it something new. Um, so which brings us to like, I say a, like a cover reveal is valuable content. So then that leads me to the next question, which is the million dollar question. And I don't have the answer for it really is what is valued in that void when marketing feels like shouting into a void what is valuable and what will engage people that is what you should be asking yourself always every time so three game changers and here we are at I don't know what point in the video because my son popped in and I'm probably gonna slice some of that dog man conversation out or will I I don't know where are we at we're at oh 16 minutes we'll see We'll see if this stays at the 16 minute marker. Then you can do math like we've been doing in homeschooling and figure out the difference of how long that dog man conversation really was. Um, so three game changers for creating social media content. If you remember, I want you to act as your own social media manager or your own marketing assistant, however you like that title. Um, think about it like this. One, two, three, right? You're going to do three things. One, do your graphics first. Do a package of graphics first. And you can do this completely easily by going to Canva, which is absolutely free. Um, if you have a little bit more money to spend, I like BookBrush. I have a BookBrush account. I'll put links to both in the description. Um, build your graphics somewhere that have social media templates. Don't waste any time making it like figure out what the wanted dimensions are today. Let a software do that for you. So I like Canva. That's how I make my YouTube thumbnail images. Um, I also like both Canva and Instagram for, um, like making it makes square images and put and had, they have like, they have templates where things are all in like the center and the right spot with little decorative stuff. Canva book brush one, start with your graphics. Two, write your content in advance in a swipe file location, Word, Google Drive. I do mine in the notes app on my phone. Um, well, I, I usually write it on my computer and it like automatically syncs to my phone. Um, and then I have it because my phone is where I post a lot of things on the fly. It's where I post Instagram, but it's so much easier and faster for me to type it all on my computer. So I will assemble them in my notes and then I just like copy paste. Um, um, oh, the other reason why I like Canva and I like the square images is because Instagram, like you want for Instagram, there's a story option, which is really great and you should use it. Canva does really nice story templates. Um, but Instagram, like your, the, po the posts are square. And so if I start with a square image and Instagram text, I can then like just kind of rework that really easily for Facebook and for Twitter. If everything is in the middle of that square, then it works for Twitter too. Um, but you can also do custom images for each social media site. To be honest, I don't do that, but it's good to be thinking about that. And then um, the third, so first graphics first to write your content in advance, keep it in a swipe file that is accessible on all the devices you will use to do your social media. So you want it on your phone, you want it on your computer, maybe even a tablet, I don't know. Three, keep it simple. Think A, B, C. Ask a question, share book news, and content from your stories or world. That's it. That is literally all the content you ever need to put out there in social media. And if you think about it like that, like at the beginning of the month or the beginning of like a book promotion cycle, right? Think I'm going to make a bunch of graphics. Um, the more the better, right? Like if you can spend an hour or two hours making a bunch of images that are all cohesive and similar, um, and then write some content that follows you ask some questions, you 
share some book news like that's what a cover reveal is that's where that slots in content um, this is where like a blurb reveal would be or a first chapter reveal um, and then you just cycle through that content. So you keep it all in a swipe file, you cycle through it. Um, obviously like you don't cover reveal, but you can say in case you missed it, here was the cover reveal I did last week over and over and over again. And it is absolutely okay if you do all of that and you get very little engagement because that cycle is practice for when you do it again. If I did that when I only had five people and my Uncle Matt in a reader group, I wouldn't have gotten a lot of engagement. I probably would have gotten some critique from my Uncle Matt that I didn't want, right? But that doesn't matter. It's practice for the next round. And if your social media manager is doing it and not your like sweet little writer heart, then your social media manager doesn't care that they're not getting immediate engagement. Now, that being said, I have some thoughts about analyzing the engagement that we get. On the weekend, I shared the first chapter of my upcoming book. I shared it to my newsletter first, and then I posted it to my Facebook page. My newsletter reaction to it was huge. I saw a big spike in pre-orders, lots of replies to the email, like that's the kind of engagement that you want to see. My Facebook page, very quiet response. Like I got some likes on it, but no comments, no shares. That is not cause for like concern. Maybe the super fans are already on the newsletter and maybe Facebook didn't show it to too many people because either the length of the post or it had too many links in it, like sales links. Um, maybe I didn't sacrifice my offering to the social media gods in the correct order. Who knows? Marketing feels like shouting into a void, right? It doesn't matter why. Don't overthink it. But notice when things really do take off. So for example, the other day after that post, um, I asked a single question. Who loves Pinterest? Can I follow you there? No links. No, didn't even have any video attached to it. Literally just a single question. And that has been my most successful Facebook post in the last couple of weeks. I noticed that and I'm going to ask more questions. I already knew I was supposed to ask questions, but I forget, right? So this video, it might just be, a lot of this might be a reminder of what you already know. That's okay, I'm happy to remind you of that. I need to be reminded too. Okay, so a lot of social media is that initial, like you're not asking for anything, zero sales, like and, and really truly zero sales. Like don't try to be clever about this. You're just building connection, right? And you need to have a really good balance there that builds towards putting the sales offer out there at the right time. All right, um, fi my final thought on this, what about personal stuff? That's completely up to you. You can share as much or as little about your real life as you want, but you always need to remember that you're filtering it through that persona. My persona, like me, loves to cook, loves to travel, um, and so I freely share travel and food photos on my Instagram. My persona, like me, has kids, and those kids like having their picture taken, they like appearing in videos with me, um, and I have their consent to do that. So. You know, that's something that my persona does. What I don't do is I don't share a ton of other mom stuff. I don't talk about school struggles. Um, I don't talk, like, even, like, I have a lot of real life interests to me. Like, I was, um, I, as an adult, um, I've discovered I have ADHD. Um, I could talk about that, but I don't. Um, it's just not a part of my persona, and, and it could be but it's not, and so I just need to remember, like, on Twitter and on your Facebook profile, I think I mentioned this earlier, you can, you can be, more, you can be real and you can kind of go and rant, because those are more like real timey, but anything that acts as a landing page where a new reader might come, land, and scroll back and look at your stuff, um, in those, in, on those parts of social media, so on your Instagram page, like on your Instagram, page, not your stories. Your story, you can be as real as you want on your stories and you can be as real as you want on your page, but just remember that they also work as landing pages for somebody to go, I wonder what this person is all about. And there's a lot of, I do that. Think about you. You probably do that too when you're interested in something. Okay. I talked about a couple of different platforms. I talked about Facebook. I talked about Instagram. 
mentioned YouTube. Clearly I'm on YouTube. There are a ton. You will find people who are like, Discord is the best place to create a group now. Facebook groups are old. Um, Tumblr is the best place to have a blog. No, you should have a blog on your own page. That, the specifics of that, that's up to you. Where you like to engage, that's probably where you should try and, you know, gather people who like to be in social media spaces. But just remember, not everybody likes social media, just like not everybody likes email. So one big takeaway I want you to have from this entire overarching series is that you need to have a little bit of all of these things so that you can gather those readers who've enjoyed your books so you can make sure that they know about your subsequent books. And that's really the whole point of absolutely everything. All right, if you have any questions about my thoughts on social media, please leave them in the comments. I would love it if you would subscribe and share this video with anyone that you think might enjoy it. I will see you again in the next video, the final video for the Unicorn Onesie, which is on cost per click advertising, which is the final and fourth tenant of book marketing. Thanks so much for joining me.